Hey, for more on the U.S. airstrikes against the Houthi targets in Yemen, joining us live now, former State Department spokesperson Morgan Ortegas. Morgan, I want to get your reaction. You heard in Lucas's great reporting there, General Jack Keane, Fox News contributor, saying that ultimately, unless they go after, the administration goes after Iran, no deterrence is going to stop these Iran-backed proxies like the Houthis. Your reaction? I think General Keene is right. Let's just fast forward, or go back, I should say, reverse to three years ago uh, when we what we handed over the Trump administration to the Biden administration. Iran was essentially in a box. We had taken out Qasem Soleimani, the head of the IRGC. The Quds Force were essentially, com you know, combined to their or confined to their barracks for a year, um, and so they weren't operating as they are now. They didn't have the billions of dollars that they have had over the past three years because of sanctions. Uh, that the Biden administration hasn't pursued. We were heavy every day doing a maximum economic pressure campaign against the Islamic Republic uh, of Iran. And so uh, what you, you have seen is just probably the biggest failure of Middle East policy in 20 years has been Biden's policy uh, towards the Iranian regime because they were in a box, they had maximum pressure, they had max leverage, and that has been squandered over the past three years. And uh, another point, by the way, on the Houthis, we see these attacks that the U.S. had to do in Yemen. That's another failure of Biden and U.S. policy. What happened three years ago in February of 21, right after Biden took over, he stopped the Saudis and said, basically, you cannot continue with the war on your own peninsula, right? We told them no more weapons from the United States for that war. We told them that the war had right. to end. What happened? The Houthis spent three years, instead of the Saudis continuing to go after them and do the work for us and go after after the terrorist for us, we the Biden administration spent the last three years letting the Houthis build up their capabilities. And now you have a nightmare scenario, Griff. This is the scenario that we talked extensively about in the days and months after 9-11. We said that we were worried that yep. sophisticated weaponry would get in the hands of a terrorist group. And that is exactly what happened. We have a right. terrorist group shooting ballistic missiles at our troops. Morgan, I want to go back just because, you know, people forget that you guys, at, towards the end of the Trump administration, listed the Houthis as a terrorist organization when Trump came or right. uh, Biden came in in February 4th of 2021 one of the first things he did is delist the Houthis from the terror list yesterday Biden was asked about whether or not the Houthis are terrorists or not here's what he said listen to this no Iran does not want to war with us I think they are I think they are, he says. So he thinks the Houthis are terrorists, but yet his administration doesn't list them. Does this matter? It does matter because, first of all, it took us about a year to build that designation package. And, and, and it matters because when they lifted the terrorism designation from the Houthis, guess what the Houthis did? Within two days, they were attacking again. And, and so it's this, I think it's, Griff, like this liberal, uh, you know, high-minded sort of view of the world. They didn't like how many civilian casualties were happening when the, when the Saudis were going after the Houthis. I get that. I respect that. What we should have done is worked with the Saudis to refine their targeting capability, to refine what they were doing, their attacks on, on the Houthis. And instead, we just said, no, 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 stop the war, too many civilian yeah. attacks. Does that sound similar? Sounds like variations on a theme. And what happens when you make people stop the war and stop going after the terrorists? It just means we get dragged into it and we have to do it ourselves. So we're now three years later doing something that the Saudis, that we stopped the Saudis from doing, uh, uh, and now we're using our own Tomahawk missiles, what? our own resources, which should be in the the Indo-Pacific and focused on China and Taiwan. Well, and one of the things that the Saudis will appreciate is right now our producers will show you Abdul Malik Al Houthi. He is the leader of this organization that has for years been building this very uh, strongly uh, armed arsenal of these fighters. There he is there. He's in his 40s. He's been at this for years. In 2022, he really went after Saudi Arabia and the UAE. And now it looks like he's yes. coming for us. Is it time for the U.S. to target this guy? 
Yeah, I mean, we should be targeting all of Houthi senior leadership. I mean, that, absolutely, that's a given. We're still waiting for the battle damage assessment. But as Senator Risch, for example, said, put out in his statement, the series of strikes I'm supportive of over the past few days, uh, but it can't be a one and done thing. It can't be a narrow response. This administration has to restore deterrence. And I'm incredibly concerned about how dangerous the world is under Joe Biden. I mean, if you think about it, Griff, every single year of the Biden presidency, there has been a new war or a new catastrophe. In 2021, you saw Kabul fall to the Taliban. You now have ISIS, Khorasan, with a foothold in every province in Afghanistan. In 22, mm -hmm. you see Russia invade Ukraine, the worst war on Europe's soil. 23, you see now war has broken out in the Middle East with Hamas killing more Jews than any day since the Holocaust. What yep. is 24 going to bring us? I mean, a well, major that's war a good question. in every single year of the Biden administration. Will we see other problems rising in the South China Sea. I want to, before I run out of time, I've only got about 30 seconds, but I want to get your reaction to the news today. We've got Taiwan's elections are in. The Independent Party, the candidate that Xi Jinping and the Communist Party of China did not want to win, Lai xing Tei, has won. Your reaction? Yeah, well, first of all, the producers need to give us another 10 minutes to talk about Taiwan. But bottom line, thank God that the DPP won again. Uh, that means that the Taiwanese people are rejecting all of the coercive um, uh, attempts by China to interfere in their election. Uh, it, China has made it clear, Xi Jinping has made it clear that reunifying with Taiwan is existential uh, to him, to, to what he wants to do with China. Uh, if that happens, you're going to have major, major problems in shipping lanes uh, there. You, you know, we could go into everything that will happen, but you will have China basically eating another mm. democracy. Uh, we can't allow that to happen. And I think Senator Graham's uh, idea to, to start getting sanctions, to put pre-invasion sanctions on China, if they even consider invading Taiwan, is a number of diplomatic options that we should be looking at, including military options to deter Xi Jinping from a military invasion of Taiwan. It's going to be very interesting to follow this. Morgan Ortegas, thank you for your time. Always insightful. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.